Boxing Ego here. If you like this video, make sure you hit the like button and also subscribe to the channel and hit the bell icon on the top of your screen to get notified when the latest new content drops. One. Why not? What are some of the advantages that you think that Triple G has over Canelo as far as speed or boxing ability, feet work? I think the biggest uh, issue in the fight for, the, for Canelo to deal with is going to be presence, uh, Golovkin's presence. Uh, Peter Quillen did an interview just not too long ago that I, that I heard. Uh, he says that it's not the punching power, even though he is hard. But what you have to worry about is that he's always there. He's always there. And that mentally drains uh, an opponent. That mentally, uh, that I can't get away from him. Um, but I think the biggest thing is going to be his timing. He's got uh, terrific timing on when to land a jab and when to throw it. Distance uh, control is very important for him. But Canelo's a good fighter too. Canelo's got great combinations, great counter punching. I just don't think that he's going to be keep, be able to keep up with with the pressure and the presence of Golovkin for 12 rounds. And the fact that he, these two guys actually sparred back in the day. Um, can Triple G take anything away from that? Oh, so long ago. But I mean, take anything away from no, that? Neither one of the guys can take anything away from that because Canelo was 19, 20 years old, and he was 147. Pounds in, and, then, and, and Golovkin is not an abusive guy. In the gym, he works and he allows guys to work so that everybody gets work. They were both preparing for a fight. I forget which fight Golovkin was preparing for, but uh, uh, it's not about beating each other up. It's about helping each other. Last for me, I mean, the fact that this is his first fight in, in Vegas. I mean, kind of dealing with he's dealt with bright lights and everything before. But how is he dealing with the whole you know Vegas scene and, and all the you know attention he's getting for this fight? He's dealing with it fine. I, I don't think he recognizes yet. Uh, maybe after the fight, he will the significance of this or the importance of this fight in, in, in the fight capital of the world because it's Vegas is. All the big fights are here. Um, even though we fought in New York a lot of times, this is where the biggest fights happen. And uh, I don't think he uh, he will recognize that until after the fight. But I, I, I'm very aware of that. I, I'm aware of the situation. I'm aware of uh, the significance of it. Thank you. This is Aku Sirius XM. I'm here with Andrew Sanchez. Now, it seems like he's a little overwhelmed in regard to his, you know, on the outer layer. He usually smiles, he usually happy, interacts a little bit more with the crowd and the media. Seems like the event, it's, it's getting to him a little bit. Maybe he's a little annoyed with all the cameras and the, and the people. I've never, I've never seen him more relaxed. He was joking up there with all the, all the journalists up there. Um, he understands that it's a it's a very important fight. He understands that Canelo's a very good fighter. Um, the media attention is a little bit more, but he's not annoyed. He's actually in a better mood than I've seen him in a long, long time. I, I think that he sees the importance of this fight. Why are you so comfortable? I mean, obviously, you're supposed to say the other fight is a tough fight, this is a tough fight, but you seem like not worried at all. What is it about Canelo that you feel like that Gennady's going to have an easy time? It's not about Canelo. I'm, I have the better horse. I, I have a guy that uh, that's going to go in and control the fight like he always does. I have a guy that hits a heck of a lot harder than Canelo. I have a guy that has had 350 amateur fights. He was a four-time amateur champion. He was a silver medalist in the Olympics. He hasn't seen a situation that he's not, um, uh, that this is going to be different from. Does anything worry about you? Of course worry about me. Canelo. Of course. He's got great hand speed. He's got great combinations. Uh, very good head movement. Uh, and he's got a good team. He's got a good team in the corner that's going to be able to change tactics in the middle of the fight. Like, we're going to have to also... Um, but until the fight starts, we don't know um, how the two styles are gonna are, are gonna mesh, you know. And if they mesh well, then we're gonna have an explosive fight. And last question: You've been being around the sport so long. Where would you rate Triple G in all time middleweights? I think that this fight will define both careers. I think that this fight, I can tell you that I think he's number one or number two behind Ray Robinson. But uh, I think that all of us can agree that Ray Robinson is the number one. Okay. Uh, but I think that this fight, how the the guy wins, whether it's Canelo or Golovkin, will define their career, will define where we place them. If he wins big, then what? Then I think he's got to be at least in the top three or four uh, after Robinson. Thank you. Now, Golovkin, Golovkin is age 35. You guys have been calling for the Canelo fight for some time. How did you keep him focused during that, like all of 2016, where you couldn't get that actual fight with Canelo? Well, actually, now? actually, we haven't been calling for the Canelo fight. We've been calling for a significant fight. Uh, okay. uh, Eubanks, uh, the fourth title with Saunders, uh, Canelo was one of them. Obviously, Chavez we had a chance to fight at one time. It's been very, it's been very frustrating for him. Uh, we've been keeping him busy. It's been frustrating because people just talk, as Eubanks did, and, and, and put himself out of a contract. Uh, same thing with Saunders. So it, when that happens, it's frustrating for a fighter to prepare mentally for a fight. Physically, they all prepare very well, but mentally, you got to have that challenge, and the challenge is is a big name, and this is the challenge. Now, is that the fight with Daniel Jacobs and Golovkin? 
a lot of fans are comparing the two, but I've seen some interviews with you. You don't think there's any comparison to what Jacobs does versus Canelo. So what's the differences between these two fights, Daniel Jacobs and Canelo? Well, first of all, Daniel Jacobs is, in my opinion, the second best middleweight in the world. Canelo hasn't fought as a middleweight in the middleweight division against a middleweight elite middleweight. We'll see how he does on the 16th to compare him. But Daniel Jacobs is uh, uh, six foot one. Um, by the time he got in the ring, is 180 plus. Uh, Canelo is five foot eight, five foot uh, eight and a half, uh, and he's uh, he's not the talented fighter that Daniel Jacobs is, in my opinion. Uh, I think that if uh, if they would have if we'd have reversed the roles of the last two fights, had Jacobs fight Canelo, Jacobs beats Canelo, and, and Golovkin. I know you guys think of knocks out Chavez the way that Chavez was that night. Uh, maybe not at a heavier weight, but at 164, he's a depleted fighter, and this guy couldn't do nothing with him. So, uh, to me, Jacobs is a tougher fight. ¿Cuánto cree que le puede afectar al Canelo que esta sea su primera pelea en 160 libras contra un 160 libras? No nada más uno, sino el mejor de la división en los últimos siete años. Que, que le afecte, ya peleó en 164 con, con Chávez, ya peleó en ese peso. Uh, que lo que le va a, lo, lo va a afectar es que va a pelear con el mejor mediano del mundo. Uh, va, a pegar, va, va a pelear con alguien que tiene una pegada uh, que nunca ha sentido Canelo. Uh, un boxeo que nunca ha mirado Canelo. Uh, aunque Canelo es bueno, pero este muchacho ya uh, 350 peleas de aficionado medallista de, de plata peleó con todos los mejores uh, 23 no casi seguiditos, ya ha estado en, este, en esta situación, uh, Galafkin es el mejor uh, boxeador y peleador y, se va, y va a mostrar lo es el sábado Tú que lo conoces más que cualquiera de nosotros, su motivación es diferente hablaba su promotor, él pidió pelear en HBO sin que hubiese tanto dinero de por medio él lo que quiere es ser alguien en el deporte y no nada más el dinero ¿no? Sí, esta pelea es importante porque ya los que estaban hablando, Canelo y Oscar y todos ellos ya, ya tuvieron que firmar tuvieron que firmar por todo lo que hablaron de eso de dejar el, el, la faja del consejo 10 días después de ganarla cuando, cuando peleó con Coto lo mismo que habló, habló y nada pasó, creo que la afición esperaba que firmara o lo iban a luchar más no tienen opción, los, los corralaron vamos a decir y ahora el 16 va a tener que enseñar mostrarnos que todo lo que hablaba era verdad. ¿Cómo fue esa preparación a diferencia del ritmo de la pelea? Dice que los primeros 3-4 rounds va a ser, van a ser difíciles para los dos. Se ha mirado Galafkin pelear. Él no sale como Tyson. Él sale para medir, sale para, para mirar táctica, sale, sale para, para a medir distancia. Uh, pero pienso ya que para la segunda parte de la pelea, uh, Canelo no va a poder con la presión, no va a poder con la presencia de Galafkin. Va a estar muy, muy fuerte. Aunque va, va a ser un guerrero lo que es. Uh, pero Galafkin va a ser muy. El físico de Galafkin va a ser mucho para él. No, ¿Qué es significa haber no, creado no, un hombre como Golovkin? ¿Qué significa? ¿Qué significa? ¿Qué? haber fabricado un peleador tan importante como Golovkin. Uh, fíjense que um, uh, es un orgullo de, de estar en esta situación, pero es más orgullo de, de saber que son, son dos mexicanos que vamos a guiar a los dos mejores boxeadores de los medianos y la pelea más grande de nuestros tiempos. Now, hey, boom, let me ask you a question. Um, when I seen you, uh, when I seen a uh, uh, Triple G box with Kel Brook, he seemed to get hit with a lot of uppercuts and a lot of straight shots down the line. He doesn't seem to move his head as much as he should. Now, with a guy like Canelo who's punching, with a decent amount of power, do you feel like his chin is going to be able to hold up to get hit with those kind of shots? Let me see, he's 37 and 0, 350 amateur fights, lost five. He's never been down, he's never been hurt. Uh, Kel Brook is retired because of that fight. Uh, if you look at some of the fighters that he fought in the past, most of them never continue their career. I think that you have to look at the situation. You have to look at a welterweight that was uh, extremely fast. Uh, as Canelo lost four rounds out of five when he fought Khan. These guys are fast, they're going to land punches. I, I think that defense, uh, a lot of times you guys, uh, you journalists, uh, look at the, look at a guy getting hit like nobody else does. Ray Robinson got hit. Everybody gets hit. It's a boxing game. Uh, but uh, I hope that he, that Canelo is there because if he's there to hit Golovkin, he's going to be there to be hit also. Okay, well, he doesn't move his head enough. Though. Don't you think those straight jabs, those straight right hands, those those shots coming straight down the middle by a guy who's punching a lot harder than a Kel Brook, a guy that's punching a lot 
sharper than the Danny Jacobs. Uh, you know, you don't feel like that's an issue just because of all the experience? 350 amateur fights, he's never been down, never been hurt. No, I don't think it's an issue. I think that they get hit because they're boxers. Canelo's going to get dropped with a jab, just like he dropped Adama with a jab. Uh, it, it's it's just part of the game, man. And if, if I gave you a perfect fighter, if I gave you a fighter like uh, one of the greater fighters of our time, Rigandau or Alara or Underworld, who couldn't sell a ticket, you guys wouldn't be here. And also, it's got to be a fight where the, it's attractive to the fans, and, and to have a perfect fighter, that means that the fans are, gonna, are not going to watch. Dice que tenemos, que tenemos, um, uh, no tenemos apuro de eso. Uh, pienso que la comisión de, de, de Nevada va a hacer un buen trabajo. Uh, son jueces que he, hemos mirado que, que en veces tienen pelas buenas y pelas malas, pero uh, nosotros tenemos que darle la, la, el tipo de pelea que no va a haber uh, controversia. ¿no? Perfecto, muchas gracias. Cuando sí. you first met Golovkin, what attracted you? Like, I seen you in the, the, you were opposite a fight in Mike Tyson, you were with Terry Norris. When you when you seen Golovkin for the first time, what was it that were you like, man, I can do something with this guy? Work ethic at the beginning, um, but then once I caught him on the mitts, I thought, damn, I, I don't get I don't get this too often with a with a small guy. Terry Norris was a great fighter, but Terry Norris had 15 knockouts out of 32 in, my, in our wins. Um, so he wasn't the puncher, but this kid, when I first felt him on the mitts, I thought, damn, I can do something with this guy. Because he's got the basic that I can't teach. No coach can teach that. We can make it better a little bit with technique and with timing and with uh, with angles, but to have that that snap on your punches, that's something God gave him. So the work ethic and, and like I said, the punching power is, uh, is one of the reasons why I thought I could do something with it. Of course, never envisioned it would be a, 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 a in this level, right? Uh, because it's a, it's a, it's very difficult to get to this level. But Canelo, uh, uh, Canelo did the same thing. They both on the rise. It takes two to two to tangle and two to make uh, this this kind of an attractive fight. Now I know you said you can't take too much from the 2011 sparring, but you said Golovkin works with guys. It's not necessarily all out war. But I heard a recount of it, and they said that Canelo got hurt to the body. Is there, do you That's, not true. That's not true. That's uh, not true. There's an article by. Um, Doug Fisher, I don't know if you Doug Fisher, in Ring Magazine, and right around that time, and he was present at one of the sparrings. And if you read the article, you'll, you'll see. It just, it was a, a welterweight against a middleweight. Canelo was 147 pounds. He was fighting Alfonso Gomez, I think he was fighting then. Uh, and, um, and Golovkin's 100, probably 68, 69, because his fight was a month away. So, no, I, I, I don't I don't recall that, let me tell you that. I don't recall that he got hurt. Thank you. Uh, evil.